Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce the concept of planes in three dimensions and show you some really simple planes just to help you get visualizing what they look like and how they work. So we're going to start first by just looking at the planes that incorporate the axes in our three dimensional space. So let's start with the X, Y plane. So in this plane, the Z values are all zero. I like to think of this as sort of the floor of my space. So at this floor, there is no height where my height is Z. So the Z is zero and Z is zero. Z equals zero actually represents the formula for this plane. So if you know we're in three dimensions and I give you Z equals zero, you could graph that or imagine that as a plane, the X, Y plane. Then if we were to take any sort of parallel plane, so another plane that's like the floor, but maybe it's shifted up or down, that would have the form Z equals C, where C is some constant. So if I give you Z equals a constant, you know that's a plane in three dimensions. And specifically, it's a plane that's parallel to this X, Y plane. All right, next let's talk about the X, Z plane. This is the plane where the Y values are going to be zero. So we can think of having X and Z points, like there's an X value and a Z value, but the Y value is always zero in order to be on this plane. So Y equals zero is the formula for the X, Z plane. And then any plane that's parallel to this one, so if we shift it along the Y axis, either forward or backward, that's going to have the form Y equals B, where B is some constant. Then we can wrap this up by thinking about the Y, Z plane. Since we've done the other two, this one should sort of fit in the spaces we haven't talked about yet. So this has Y and Z coordinates, but the X coordinates are always zero. So this means the formula is X equals zero for this plane. Similarly, we can find a parallel plane by shifting this plane along the X axis, either forward or backward. And we would have X equals A as a type of parallel plane to this one. So just like in two dimensions, how maybe X equals A is a vertical line or Y equals B is a horizontal line. Here, X equals A is a plane, Y equals B is a plane, and Z equals C is a plane. So we just kind of upgrade by one dimension. And instead of having lines, we have planes in three dimensions with this type of formula. Okay, so just to reinforce this with an example, Let's look at the point three, four, five, and talk about which planes it lies on. And I'm missing a comma here. It looks like 345, but it really should be separate. So we're looking at a three dimensional point, three, four, five. So we can start by looking at what happens when X equals three. So this plane is going to be parallel to the YZ plane. I'll do my best to draw it here. So we look at three on the X and then we have this sort of vertical plane coming out in the way I have graphed it. So the point three, four, five is going to be on this plane because it has an X value of three and this is the plane X equals three. Let's look at the other planes. I'm just going to kind of give them to you so we can start looking ahead. This is also going to be on the planes Y equals four and Z equals five. Remember, these kind of look like the coordinates of the point, right? We're just taking out the coordinates, x equals three, y equals four, z equals five. But these are also the equations of the planes we are talking about. So by setting x equals three, we're now describing a plane, not just like some individual x component. We're talking about the whole plane here. So next, let's look at y equals four. Again, I'll try to graph it here on my axes. And this plane is going to be parallel to the X, Z plane. So that's just another way to visualize it if the picture is not helping. And then lastly, for Z equals five, this is sort of our plane that is parallel to the X, Y plane, to the floor on our graph. And so it's up here at Z equals five. This one's, I think, the hardest to draw. And so our point would also be in this plane. Again, this example is really just to help you start visualizing some of the planes and thinking about a point being in a plane. I have another video where we talk about how to write more complicated equations of planes, but these are the simplest, most basic first ones we start with when we talk about planes in three dimensions. Okay, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.